On today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the Mattel Batman Unlimited The Dark Knight Returns Batman. These have just recently started popping up. Uh, Spot ultimately had to pick this up online as uh, my retail tends to get a lot of this stuff late. Um, I was looking forward to getting this Batman as well as the other Batman that was in the set. On the side of the package, while it does utilize the now common Batman Unlimited, and I think DC Unlimited uses the same style of packaging too, on the side we've got a picture of uh, Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. Very iconic picture right there. And when we flip it over on the back, the Dark Knight Returns Batman, also depicted in this picture, is the Robin. Real name, Bruce Wayne, occupation, CEO, crime fighter, location, Gotham City, powers, abilities, and skills, martial arts expert, master detective, vast arsenal of weapons and gadgets. Aside from the Dark Knight Returns Batman, the other Batman you can get is Planet X Batman, which I'm looking to also review as well. It has been 10 years since the mysterious Batman last cast a shadow in the crime-riddled Gotham City. An aging Bruce Wayne has hung up his cape and crime-fighting career due to the passing of Robin Jason Todd. In Gotham City's dystopia cityscape, the Cold War still rages on, and most masked heroes have been forced into hiding or retirement as a result of the suspicious and unforgiving public. But... With a ruthless street gang causing chaos in the streets and several of his nemesis returning to prominence, Wayne has no choice but to suit up as the Dark Knight once again. What I am going to do is, of course, take a break. Going to get this opened up, and certainly when we come back, we're going to get a better look at the Batman Unlimited Dark Knight Returns Batman. Don't go anywhere. More on the way. The accessories that will come with the Dark Knight Returns Batman is one standalone Batarang. Very small, very generic, and also it's made in China. Uh, the one thing with it being the Dark Knight Returns, um, the the actual gadgetry, very stylistic. So the Batarang doesn't really share very much in the way of a bat logo or bat symbol, as much as it kind of just looks like an inverted mustache. So much so, Spot dropped it. But there it is right there. You can easily take the Batarang, and actually Batman was packaged with the Batarang at the time that I opened it up. Opened him up. You can kind of have him just holding the Batarang. It doesn't really serve much purpose other than that, but, you know, Batarang's plenty. It's always nice to have Batman at least holding something. Moving this out of the way, let's have a look at Batman. Now, I'm not really sure how I feel about this figure. This figure feels, as a whole, pretty good. Um, there are aspects to it that I like, and some aspects to it that I'm not a big not a big fan necessarily of. Um, as as a comparison, I really don't I don't actually have a comparison just yet. I really shouldn't have said comparison, but really, in in par with other Batman figures, this Batman is a little more stockier. He's a much chunkier looking Batman. As you can see, his presence, he's, he's a very large figure. One thing I do really like is, uh, while well, the coloring, he's got the basic gray and black Batman motif. He's also got himself a yellow, uh, goldish yellow, almost a mustard yellow utility belt. No front symbol or snap to the belt. The belt as a whole is just comprised of pockets. Multiple, multiple pockets. When we get up to his chest, Batman does have a very broad, again, very simplistic Batman logo. This would be an awesome... I, you know what? I used to have a t-shirt like that. I should, pick, I should see if I can find another one of it. Um, that really neat t-shirt. And of course, he's got his black gloves, the black boots. A very large, wide cape as well. No points or anything on the end. It just fans out and is very broad. Um, it's a stiffer, rubbery plastic to be expected with all the other uh, DC Universe style figures that we've gotten. 
but certainly it's it's much larger, much wider than some of the other uh, DC Universe figures that we've gotten as well. Which then kind of brings us to his face. Well, his face is something you may either like or dislike. He has an aged look to him. His face, his mouth's not so much, but there's a little bit of wrinkles and everything in his cowl, and though that really may not represent his age so much, it does make Batman, it gives him that older look to him. He's got these shorter ears, and of course see Batman white eyes. It seems as if, too, he's also got a dark patch right around his nose, too. His expression, being that you can't really make out his teeth, he could be grimacing. Also, it could be looking like he's posing awkwardly for a family photo. You can see his nostrils. Don't look right up them, but you can see his nostrils. Uh, paint, for the most part, is pretty good. I mean, when you start getting to around the sides of the cowl, there are some issues where there's a little bit of flesh color that's kind of carried over, or the paint hasn't completely covered over the areas of the flesh. But still, it works, and uh, the Batman as a whole is pretty clean in design. He's also very basic in design, too. It may not necessarily be a figure that everyone is necessarily going to pick up, but... You know, for the comic enthusiasts, those who have really followed the Dark Knight Returns, um, it, you know, it, it's a good figure to have as part of your DC Universe collection. Uh, one thing that's also very interesting about the figure, too, and I don't mean to zoom so far into his crotch, but it looks like his crotch is actually a separate piece. Um, in the past, this crotch area, as Spot talks quite a bit about Batman's crotch, but at one point uh, in other figures, this whole crotch piece would have actually been sculpted in with the lower torso of Batman. In this case, the torso of the leg is actually underneath his underoos. His bat underoos are actually a rubbery, a rubbery piece of plastic. It's one of the few times I've actually seen it, especially on a DC Universe style of figure. I also really like his gloves. He's got these really large bulky, bulky gloves. Well, I mean, really, the, the figure as a whole is very bulky, but he's got these very large, bulky gloves as well. Now, being that it is a DC Universe style of figure, with Mattel running the reins and, and releasing a figure such as this, it has a very simplistic design to the face. I feel as if, with it being a Batman Dark Knight Returns style figure, it almost is something where some comic companies can handle things better than others. I think when we start getting into the realm, and I'm probably going to talk about this a lot with the other Batman that I'm going to be reviewing too, when we start getting into comic-inspired in, uh, figures, sometimes a release such as a Mattel version of this figure, as good as it may be, is not as good as if, say, DC Direct handled this. If DC Direct handled this, we probably would get a lot more uh, gruff and stitching in the in the mask. You know, we might have a full grimace in the Batman face. Uh, really, the best comparison I can make to it is the All Star Batman. The R All Star Batman really took the elements of the comic and excelled in it. You know what? While we're at it, why don't I just take a break? I'm gonna go grab that figure. Hold on. I think if we're gonna properly review this figure, I'm gonna move over the Mattel. Uh, Batman Unlimited Batman. And I'm actually going to bring in the DC Direct Batman. Now granted, it's two different uh, comic series. This is actually from All-Star Batman. But one thing I really like of a comparison is how DC Direct uh, can take essentially a same design of Batman and you can see how they can add the little bit of grimace in his mouth, the little bit of stubble in his face, you can even see what there's pockets in Batman's t uh, areas around his mouth. Now, I know I'm using a comparison of a DC Direct. I really shouldn't be doing that. But you can see how Batman here definitely has a lot more personality going for him. One of the reasons why I really like this figure. His articulation it wasn't fantastic, but I still really like that figure. Now, if we take that, and the camera will forgive me and, and focus again, there's just something a little too simplistic, I think, by having Mattel release a figure such as this. It's, it's nice, 
And if you're somebody who wants to have different interpretations of a figure from a comic run as part of your lineup, part of the same released series, like say DC Universe, I would say this is a good Batman to pick up. Personally, however, I kind of feel as if a figure like this just isn't getting enough service to it where you really get that feeling, you really get that scruff to Batman that we would have gotten from the Dark Knight Returns. Unfortunately, being that he has been simplified back as much as he has, it almost just ultimately looks like a heavy guy wearing a Batman suit. It's really a matter of preference, but I almost feel as if Mattel, as good as they did with a release of this figure, it could have been a lot better. It could have been a lot better. A little bit of scruff, just a little more detail in the face, but then really, when that starts happening, we're getting away from the realm of what we would come to expect from a Mattel-released product. And then we start really looking into the DC Direct, DC uh, Comics uh, collectibles, versions of these figures, to which I would almost say a Dark Knight Returns Batman probably would have been better suited and has been better suited through the DC Direct versions, not so much from Mattel. Of course, as always, you guys can share your thoughts of the, something like this down below. I would think as a, again, as a multi-articulated figure, and we will get into the articulation in a second, as a multi-articulated figure of, of Batman from that comic run, I think this is a good Batman, but I don't think it's really the most iconic version of what this figure could be. Now, granted, in the way of his articulation, this Batman does have a bald jointed head. It moves up and down, left and right. The arms, of course, as always, move out via a pin and socket. They move back and forth. He does have a rotation in the bicep, even though his arms are so much more massive than what we would get with a, a DC Universe style figure. Uh, he does have a bend in the elbow, a rotation in the hand. Then he has the upper torso bend, his rotation in the waist. The legs go forward, back, out. Uh, he also does bend at the knee, bend in the foot, and swivel in the boot. You know, really, the one, the one other thing, too, that Spot wants to has been thinking while I'm looking at this figure too. Due to his stockiness and the way he's built, and also because of this, this underru area, this very much to me feels like a Batman from the Masters of the Universe Classics line. If we were to take, like, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a Batman name that we could use from Masters of the Universe Classics. But if we were to take a Batman figure from Masters of the Universe Classics with that same stocky build, I'm wondering even how much of this has carried over from a, a, uh, a Masters of Universe Classics versus a DC Universe style figure. I know there, there are some additional articulation points, but you really gotta wonder how much of this carried over from a, uh, a Masters of Universe Classics. Maybe even something like the arms, the torso, possibly even those legs. Those legs look very familiar and also, because he is a stockier figure, it is possible this was a a, a mold carried over from that, that line. It's entirely up to you which pr method you prefer. I mean, if you certainly like a Masters of the Universe classic style, or really if you just prefer a multi-articulated Batman that fits in perfectly with your DC Universe, of course this is a good Batman to get. Personally, I almost feel as if He's too simplistic for what he represents. I almost still would have preferred a DC Direct version of him instead. For that reason, I'm going to give the Dark Knight Returns Batman a 7. As always, you guys can let me know down below today's toy spot. However, we were having a look at the Mattel. We're looking today at the Batman Unlimited Dark Knight Returns Batman. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.